NVIDIA smashes earnings, becomes the third biggest company in America, and is undisputedly the most important stock in the world. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Yesterday, NVIDIA reported Q4 results, and the market has gone absolutely wild. To understand why, it's important to put this all in context. The last year of the stock market has really been a tale of two forces. On the one hand, there were macro forces, which theoretically could have pushed stocks lower. Throughout the last year, despite markets wanting the Fed to stop their hiking cycle, interest rates were going up before finally pausing rate hikes at the end of the year, but we still appear to be a long way from rate cuts. Other aspects of the economy have looked wobbly as well. We had a banking crisis last year, government shutdown crises, and yet none of that could ultimately tamp down the enthusiasm on the stock market, and the reason for that was two letters, A and I. At the core of that was, of course, NVIDIA, the company whose chips power so much of the generative AI movement. Now, because NVIDIA has been doing so well for so long at this point, one of the most phenomenal rises, frankly, in stock market history, there has been recently a sense or a question of how long can this go on? In other words, have things gotten overhyped? And so when it comes to why these earnings were such a big deal, it wasn't just that NVIDIA did well, but that it suggests that the hype cycle had not gotten ahead of itself and that we were still at the beginning. But we'll come back to that in just a moment. First, let's talk about what actually happened. In the fourth quarter of last year, NVIDIA reported revenue of $22.1 billion. That's a 265% year-over-year rise. What's more, profit increased by 9x year-over-year. By no stretch of the imagination did it seem like things were slowing down. The company forecast revenue for this quarter, Q1 2024, to hit $24 billion, which was significantly ahead of analyst estimates. Said CEO Jensen Huang, Fundamentally, the conditions are excellent for continued growth. NVIDIA's data center business specifically, including H100 graphics cards, saw 409% year-over-year growth. After a 15% share price jump, NVIDIA is now the third most valuable company after just Microsoft and Apple, and ahead of Google slash Alphabet, Amazon, and Meta. Now, when it comes to this question of where we are in the cycle, the message from NVIDIA is very clear that we are still at the beginning. Writes the New York Times, Jensen Huang, NVIDIA's co-founder and chief executive, argues that an epical shift to upgrade data centers with chips needed for training powerful AI models is still in its early phases. That will require spending roughly $2 trillion to equip all of the buildings and computers to use chips like NVIDIA's, he predicts. In a release, he said, Accelerated computing and generative AI have hit the tipping point. Demand is surging worldwide across companies, industries, and nations. Expanding in an interview, he said, we are one year into generative AI. My guess is we are literally into the first year of a 10-year cycle of spreading this technology into every single industry. The results were so profound that even analysts who had been skeptical had to come around. One research analyst wrote, Despite concerns over its high valuation, NVIDIA's unparalleled AI-related intellectual property, rooted in decades of visionary investment, sets it apart in a league of its own. One thing that I find interesting about that concern around NVIDIA's valuation is that for as fast as its stock price is rising, its profits are going up even more. Forward Guidance podcast host Jack Farley writes, NVIDIA Forward PE continues to decline. What is the appropriate multiple for a company that just doubled its revenue and six-tupled its earnings? Now, to the extent that there is something that could stop NVIDIA, one question is, of course, restrictions set by the U.S. around exports to China. And indeed, yesterday NVIDIA said that its sales to China had dropped from 19% of its data center chip revenues last year to a mid-single-digit percentage this year. Given that their revenue just kept rising, however, Jensen Huang's previous argument that there was so much demand elsewhere that the China restrictions wouldn't necessarily hit them that hard seems to have been borne out. At the same time, of course, NVIDIA is still working quite hard to offer products for the Chinese market that come in under the restrictions set by the White House. NVIDIA, however, isn't the only chip company in the news. Axios, for example, published today a piece called NVIDIA's Boom and Intel's Big Plans show how AI has turbocharged chipmaking. They write, Intel, which once reserved nearly all its chipmaking capacity for its own processors, is in the midst of a pricey gamble to transform itself into a credible contract manufacturing rival to Taiwan-based TSMC, which makes chips for firms that design them, like NVIDIA. At an event in San Jose, Intel said it already has orders worth $15 billion for its foundry business and is on track to be the number two chip foundry by 2030. The company declined to provide any further detail. So basically, whereas Intel used to just be focused on building its own chips, they're now shifting into the type of business that TSMC is in, of fabricating chips for other people. Said their CEO at an event, what are we going to do with all those fabs? I think we're going to be building an awful lot of AI chips. Overall demand appears to be insatiable for the need for computing for several years into the future. The CEO also said that previous estimates that the chip industry would grow to $1 trillion a year, which were once seen as aggressive, now appear to be way too conservative. 
One of Intel's big coups recently is that Bloomberg is reporting that Microsoft will be using Intel to manufacture their in-house chips. Writes Bloomberg, Intel has landed Microsoft as a customer for its made-to-order chip business, marking a key win for an ambitious turnaround effort under CEO Pat Gelsinger. Intel has been seeking to prove it can compete in the foundry market where companies produce custom chips for clients. It's a major shift for the semiconductor pioneer, which once had the world's most advanced chip-making facilities and kept them to itself. Bloomberg continues, Microsoft is looking to secure a steady supply of semiconductors to power its data center operations, especially as demand for AI grows. Designing its own chips lets Microsoft fine-tune the products to its specific needs. Said Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella in a statement, We need a reliable supply of the most advanced, high-performance, and high-quality semiconductors. That's why we are so excited to work with Intel. And frankly, I don't know what combination of strategy paying off or a great PR team it is, but Intel also got a piece in Wired called Intel's AI Reboot is the Future of U.S. Chip Making. The biggest chipmaker in the U.S. is hoping that generative AI and U.S. government concern about China's tech ambitions will revitalize its business. The piece begins, call it a comeback, with consequences not just for Intel, but also the U.S. government's hopes of maintaining a lead in artificial intelligence. The long piece, which is totally worth a read, is all about this big move of Intel's to transform itself into more of a foundry, putting a fine point that it's not just Intel's destiny, but the U.S.'s destiny tied up in their efforts. U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo who consequently is the person in charge of all these China sanctions, spoke at that Intel event yesterday as well. According to Wired, she compared the U.S. government's current focus on revitalizing the chip industry to the space race of the 1960s. Raimondo said, The fact that we are so overly dependent on a couple of countries in Asia that we need for life-saving medical equipment, cars, every piece of technology, showed us we've got to get back to work making more chips. Pretty interesting stuff, and I think an indication that the geopolitics of AI is also potentially an incredibly powerful economic force for AI companies. This is something that I'm sure we will explore a lot more, but for now, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.